Why do we zone out while reading or driving? Let's say you're about to read a book. You start at the top of the page, focused. Then your mind starts wandering. Maybe you have to give your child a bath this evening, or thinking about watching a movie with your spouse. Next thing you know, you've arrived at the bottom of the page after reading every word, but you have no recollection of what you just read. How can this be? Let's have a look at another common scenario called highway hypnosis. You're driving your car, focused on the road like every good driver should be. After a while, your mind starts to wander and you zone out, maybe thinking about the NBA game you watched last night, or about the upcoming dentist appointment you have next week. After a few minutes, you snap out of it and get back to reality. You realize that you've been driving for the past 5 minutes, all while following traffic rules, but you have no recollection of it. How is it possible for us to be driving a car while at the same time zone out completely? And how is it possible for us to read a book while thinking about something else entirely? Do we have superpowers we don't know about? Probably not. Instead, we can attribute this to automaticity. The first step consists of learning something new. Then, after enough practice and repetition, we become so familiar with the skill that we are able to perform it without thinking about it. At that point, it becomes an automatic response pattern or habit that requires little active supervision. For example, muscle memory during assembly line work. So what is the physiological explanation behind all of this? Every action you do involves the coordination of multiple parts of your brain. Your eyes, in particular, connect to many different parts themselves. Let's look at reading specifically. To read, your eyes must first track the text. Then, other parts of your brain have to interpret the symbols and characters, interpret the words and grammar, consolidate that into meaning, and store that meaning. As you can probably guess, the part that tracks the text and controls your eye movements involves your muscles in a way that takes very little conscious effort. If you get distracted and the eyes part of your brain does not get the order to stop reading, your eyes will just keep going even if the other parts of your brain get interrupted. So the eyes will keep reading, but the other part of your brain that was previously assimilating the information you were reading is now busy with other thoughts. Every part of your brain can only do one task at a time. Each part can do a different task, but they have to work together for complex tasks. Now let's see what actually happens inside the brain. To do so, we use a technique called fMRI, which stands for Functional Magnetic Resonance Imaging. Here's what it looks like. An fMRI measures brain activity by monitoring changes in blood flow that are linked to neuronal activity. For instance, when a specific area of the brain is being used, the blood flow in that region increases. All you need to know is that fMRIs allow us to record the brain's changing signals. Let's say that we have recorded this data when someone is relaxing versus when they're reading a book. There's a set of brain regions referred to as the default network. They seem to be doing more work specifically during relaxation than during reading or any other mental task. Indeed, the default network is responsible for mind wandering, which tends to be thinking about yourself, thinking about others, thinking about memories, and thinking about the future. There's another set of brain regions that seem to be working harder during reading or performing any other mental task than during relaxation, and that is the task network, responsible for attention-demanding activities such as mental arithmetic and reading. 
The interesting thing about these networks is that they seem to exist in balance. If one is doing more work, the other is doing less. When you start doing something like reading, the task network starts working harder and the default network chills out a bit. The point where you lose focus coincides with a shift in the balance between the networks and the default network becomes dominant. Let's summarize everything we've gone over. When we start reading, the task network is dominant, which means the eyes are focused on tracking the text and parts of the brain are working on assimilating the information. After some time, our brains shift to the default network, in which the eyes keep tracking the text due to automated muscle memory. But other parts of the brain are now focused on unrelated thoughts, such as memories. The interesting question then becomes why these changes in the balance happen. Why can we only use one system at a time? How does our brain decide whether to focus on one task instead of another? One theory is that our brains only have a certain amount of limited capacity that it has to spend in the right places and that this spending is determined by an evolved, massively interconnected structure that is probably geared toward efficiency. This topic involves studying the coordinated activity of tens of billions of cells, and more specifically how they process and transfer the information that we receive from the outside world, and the incredibly complex task of distinguishing what is important and meaningful. But the reality is that understanding how the brain works is one of the most complex questions the scientific community has yet to answer. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions that you would like me to answer in the next video, please be sure to leave them in the comments below.